Lane Stadium, they are reminded of years and years of college football tradition. Today, Virginia Tech will be reaching for excellence against Boston College in our Big East Game of the Week. Throughout American history, the land offensive is powered football. BC has entered the call with a ground attack that has the Eagles near the top of the Big East. Enter the Vaughn Tech defense and the powerful Hokie running attack led by Ken Oxendine and fellow foot soldier Marcus Parker. Field General Al Clark will help pace the assault as the Hokies and the Eagles get ready for a battle in the trenches. Couple of teams coming off of non-conference losses last week. Today, first place up for grabs in the Big East. Welcome to Blacksburg, everybody. Dave Sims along with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. Great to have you with us. And today, we're going to see some kind of running game from two ball clubs. We start with Virginia Tech. Home losers to Miami last week. They're going to go with their dynamic duo to try to get back on the winning track. Kenny Oxendine and Marcus Parker. And you start talking about quality running backs. You talk about offensive line play. That's where this game will be decided. You see the numbers for Oxendine. 422 yards, probably more importantly, eight touchdowns. Parker, a quality back, eight yards per crack. When you talk about Oxendine, you talk about north and south. 225-pound running back, great offensive line, very big up front. Parker, can he run the football? Yes, he can. Over 1,000 yards for his career, a very big blocker, though. A lot of the keys for Oxendine is a blocking is from his offensive line and Parker. Oxendine fumbled a couple of times last week. He'll be highly motivated today. For Boston College, Amari Walker will get the start. He's the emotional leader of the BC Eagles in that running game, and he's backed up by Mike Cloud. That's a heck of a punch. And they're glad to have Amari Walker back in the lineup. He's been hurt for the last couple of weeks. You see the numbers for 1996, almost 1,200 yards. He led the Big East. Mike Cloud, a quality running back, 209 yards against West Virginia in the second half. You talk about Amari Walker, you're talking about a very powerful running back, breakaway speed, and he's a leader for BC. Quality offensive line, Damian Woody, their center, as good as anybody. Brzezinski, the left guard, another one. And you look at Mike Cloud, he's a running back that's got a different gear. He'll put some stress on this Virginia Tech defense. It ought to be a good football game, and look for the line where we're playing. No question about it, BC, the leader in total offense in the Big East Conference. We've got a good one, and we're also going to see Matt Hasselbeck, the leading passer in the Big East, coming your way. The Big East Football Conference Game of the Week, BC at Virginia Tech. Great day for football here at Blacksburg, Virginia. We're at Lane Stadium, Warsham Field. Conditions ideal for this Big East matchup. Virginia Tech 3-0 in the conference. And BC 2-1. 69 degrees of temperature, calm winds, grassy field, and uh, two types of grass. Jeff Bostick talk about that a little bit later. Partly sunny and warm is the forecast. Third member of our broadcast team standing by on the sideline, that's John Sanders. John, what do you have for us? Dave, thank you very much. One of the things that no doubt affected the Hokies last week was the loss of their offensive line coach, J.B. Grimes. He woke up last Saturday with chest and arm pains, came to the game, but left in the first quarter, went to the hospital on Monday. He, went un he underwent quadruple heart bypass surgery in his absence this week. Taking over has been Brian Steinspring, so we'll see how that offense does under new leadership here this afternoon. No doubt, though, they will be thinking about J.B. Grimes, who was watching from his hospital bed this afternoon. All right, John, thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, JB, we send our best out to you. We were interested in hearing uh, what happened to uh, JB Jeff when we were talking to Frank Beamer and the staff. Well, we were interested. And you know what? The thing about it, he's got, uh, you know, four young children. Seems like he's coming through the surgery fine and is going to recover from this thing. Series tied at 2 2. Tech won the last meeting convincingly, and a visiting team has won the last three ball games. BC won the toss and elected to defend. Kicking off for Boston College is Terrence Hannafin. And deep to receive for the Hokies. Ike Charlton is the deep back, and we're underway from Blacksburg. Charlton will take it at the six. Cost the 20 with some room, and finally hammered down at about the 27 yard line. Twenty one yards return. Take a look at our Sam Adams starting lineup. Al Clark the junior quarterback. He is a good one. Sixty percent passing and he's accounting for almost one hundred eighty four yards per ball game in total offense. Sean Scales a good one. Number twenty two their top receiver with thirteen catches. He's got two touchdowns. 
And on that offensive line, Gennaro DiNapoli, 6'3", 301 preseason, all Big East, and highly regarded nationally. Here come the Hokies from the 28-yard line. Oxendine. Penalty flag on the play as he gets to the 34-yard line. But a penalty flag back along the line of scrimmage. Holding on the offense. Buddy Ward and his staff today, umpire Mike Simcheski, linesman Bristol Martin, line judge Nick Trainer, field judge Tom Hill, side judge Al Riveron, and the back judge is Jim Anderson. On the offense. The replay first down. Not the type of start Frank Beamer and his coaching staff had hoped for. And, and you know what? Great job by Chris Hovan, the nose tackle. Right there, you might see a little hold by number 75, Todd Washington. First and 21. Ball's back at the 17-yard line. Clark, first passing attempt. Got a man, and he completes it upfield to number 31. That's Michael Stewie. And he's fighting across the 40. It looks like he's getting up for first down yardage for Virginia Tech. The BC starting defensive line, Chris Hovan, has really made himself into a player. He's at 282 pounds, put on 30 pounds since coming to BC. Markel Blunt, he's the unsung hero of this club, all conference potential. And Pedro Serino, he will hit you coming from that free safety position. He's got two interceptions, and he's the top tackler. So the Hokies with a first down up to the 41-yard line. Oxendine gets hit by number 47 for the BC Eagles. That's Andrew Quaza. Andrew, the right defensive tackle. He's out of West Seneca, New York. When you talk about the first completion, Al Clark really got hammered by Brooke Hill. This is what you know, Virginia Tech is going to look to do. Take Oxendine between the tackles. No huddle offense. Calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. Parker. And Oxendine, the ball carries. Here's Oxendine with room. It's dragged down from behind by Chris Hovan, number 95, as he gets up to about the 48. Picks up five. Speaking with the BC defensive coordinator, Tim Rose, you know, you ask yourself, if your quarterback is, is Al Clark, you, you're not the type of team that can go in there and blitz this guy. He makes a lot of things happen on his own. Do you play softer on the corner? They've got a tough dilemma trying to stop a very mobile quarterback. Clark changing things at the line of scrimmage. Changing it again. Play clock at two. Oxendine straight ahead. And he's in the BC territory. It's going to be real close for the first down. Chris Hovan with the stop number 95. Boy, he did all of that switching, Jeff, just to call a plunge up the middle. And I think what you find right there, you find out exactly how strong Ken Oxendine is. You know, you talk about a 225-pound tailback. Look at the leg drive. Chris Hovan, we've mentioned. Look at the leg drive. Hovan is 282 pounds, dragging him forward for what looks to be a first down. Tell you what, that last surge by Oxendine was impressive. Young man, 6'1", 223, out of Chester, Virginia. And we spoke with Ricky Bustle, their offensive coordinator. Oxendine is not the type of back that is a fumbler. Last week he had two big fumbles that really hurt this football team. And we asked Ricky about Oxendine's preparation this week. He said he's been a different guy. He's been a focused football player. Oxendine is putting up some numbers. Had an outstanding career here at Virginia Tech. First and 10 for the BC 48. Clark with a real good fake all day. Home run ball down for Stewie, and he overthrows him. He had his man beaten, Shalom Tolfrey, the left cornerback. Stewie did a terrific job on the holding post pattern. On the offense. And another holding call against Virginia Tech. A lot of time for Clark to throw, Jeff. And you know, uh, John mentioned it in the open. J.B. Grimes, the offensive line coach for Virginia Tech, uh, recovering from uh, open heart surgery. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. You know, we're two and a half minutes into this game. If this offensive line's not careful with their hands, uh, Coach Grimes is going to have a, a relapse in the hospital this morning. 
Frank Beamer in his 11th season going into the Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame on November 7th. Frank's been very successful here at Virginia Tech 65 52 and 2. First and 31 at the 31. Clock by some time. He's got Stewie open again and overthrows him down at the 28 yard line of BC. Pat Feltz covering for BC. You know, Virginia Tech, when you speak to him early in the week, the, the constant key keep Al Clark in the pocket, and we have to get after him and hit him. Willits. Gets after him late. Clark not able to set his feet. But this is a type of quarterback. He makes a lot of plays on the run. Big second down. With time again, Clark throws, and it's a short. Trying to get it to Oxendine. He was covered by Markel Blunt at the 37. You know, he is a quarterback that doesn't want to be labeled a scrambler. Sits in the pocket, no one open, gets a little bit of pressure late. Great job by the Boston College corners covering the wide receivers. You mentioned in the open, you know, a guy like Scales, he's out of the lineup today with a bad ankle. Virginia Tech will miss him. Sure will. Angelo Harrison getting some time today as well as number 48, Ken Handy. Pitch it outside, Oxidine. Good tackle. Nicely done by Boston College's Pat Feltz, the quarterback, coming up to make that play. That'll make a bring on a punt situation for Virginia Tech. So two holds on that series by the Hokies really set them back. They got into BC territory at the 48-yard line. Jimmy Kibble, sophomore out of Manassas, Virginia, is standing at his own 22. Left footer gets it out of there. Not a real good kick. Walker will try to field it. Jermaine Walker's got it. Beats the first wave and swarmed under at the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Derek Crittenden. So BC, when we come back, will get their hands on the ball for the first time from Blacksburg, Virginia. 11.32 to go. First quarter, no score. The cast is brought to you by Gulf. Since 1901, a name you know, a name you can trust. Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Outback Steakhouse for an Aussie good time over an awesome steak. Get to Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And by Sam Adams, a better glass of beer. Great to have you with us from Blacksburg, Virginia. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you. This will be the first crack on offense for BC what do we look for in the first play here Jeff I think if you're Boston College you take your shot you go long Omari Walker first play up the middle picks up about three Danny wheel number 90 with this stop here's a look at the starting lineups Matt Hassel back back in action leading passer in the Big East Conference and here's the rest of our Sam Adams starting lineup for Boston College. Dennis Harding, wide receiver with 18 catches, dangerous deep ball threat. Damian Woody, the guy that Jeff Bostick likes. He's got pro potential, long arms, and really is a keystone to that offensive line. This will be a second down and eight from the 39. And they hammered up the middle with Frank Chamberlain. So, so much for Coach Jacks going deep. Yeah, Jeff Jagosinski, the uh, Boston College coordinator, told us about an hour before the game, our first play is going to be a bomb. I guess he changed in the locker room, huh? <laughs> you, can't, you can't trust those coaches. That's it. Bring up a third and six. A look at the Virginia Tech defensive group, Danny Wheel. He's at the defensive front. Tate is real good in the middle. And Prelo, watch for him, is a big playmaker. Play clock at two when Hasselbeck gets it. Steps, throws, got a man picked off. It could go. It's Carpenter. And he fumbles. Who's going to get it? Boston College got right back at the 35-yard line. The center, Damian Woody, got it. 
So Keon Carpenter had a lot of sideline, cut back into traffic, fumbled it, and BC will get it right back. The big key about interceptions is when you pick the ball up, you know, when it's all over and said and done, you need to have possession of the football. We see it right there. Carpenter, a great job picking this football up. And you talked about Damian Woody, you know, the Boston College staff and Matt Hasselbeck. They love him right now for recovering this fumble. You talk about hustle. You see a center breaking downfield. Great tackle by their tight end. Damian Woody's around the ball and picks this fumble up. And a 20-yard return wiped out. So BC first and 10 at its own 35 out of the gun again. Omari Walker finding a lot of room into the secondary end of Virginia Tech territory at the 49. First down, Boston College, number nine, Anthony Midget with the stop for Virginia Tech. We talked about the offensive line. Damian Woody is one of the components. He is their center. The left guard, Doug Brzezinski, another good one. Shotgun, looks like pass. Omari Walker, the senior. North and south, folks. This game's going to be about offensive line play and quality running backs. Good job by BC up front. Mari Walker coming off a left knee sprain against West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. BC came from 17-7 down to win that game. First and 10 at the Virginia Tech 49. Hasselbeck, they pick up the blitz. One man out. Harding, he's got it at the 25. First down, Boston College. He beat the coverage of Larry Green. To be a complete offensive line, it's one thing to run the football. Check this protection. Omari Walker, great block on the corner. Hassle back with Tom. Dennis Harding lays out. Great reception. This is exactly how the Boston College football team wanted to start this game. Get some momentum early. That they have, no doubt about it. Ball at the 24 now. Big catch by Harding. Walker. Finding room again into the secondary. Inside the 20 down to the 18. Carl Bradley, number 77. Gain of five by Omari Walker. The senior has racked up a terrific career. He's well over 2,000 yards now. Person you may want to watch today, the right tackle for Boston College, Paul Zukakis. True freshman starting at right tackle. Noah LaRose, their junior. Big six foot six, 310 pounder. Bad shoulder out for today's game. True freshman at right tackle. Austin College, the second best rushing team in the league behind Virginia Tech. They go to Walker again. Great hole up the middle. Amari Walker inside the 10. First and goal, Boston College. John Engelberger saved the touchdown. We talked about it in the open. This is going to be a game about offensive line play. Andy Mitchell, look at the right guard. Sukakis, great job by Amari Walker getting in there. Chamberlain with a great block. Doug Brzezinski, an All-American candidate, left guard. Good kick out block. They're controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Good block by Frank Chamberlain, two number 44, the lead fullback. First and goal for the Eagles. Ball is at the eight-yard line. Chamberlain up the middle. Frank running hard down to the three. It's the second week in a row, Jeff. We've seen a couple of a team that has a fullback who they rely mainly on a block, but to give them a little taste down inside. You've got to give the fullback a crumb here or there. You know, they do all the dirty work. They block the pass protection. These guys like to run the football, too. I'll guarantee you, his teammate, Omari Walker, if he had this type of look at that hole. It opened up like the Red Sea. If Omari Walker has that, that, that hole, it's a touchdown. Got a feeling we may see that play again. The extra back in the backfield is a tight end, Rock Tardio. He's in motion. They'll follow him, Omari Walker. Oh, he got hit. Great pop by number 93, Kerwin Harrison. Top tackler on the defensive line, and he was a walk-on. He unloaded there, 6'2", 274, redshirt senior from Martinsville, Virginia. Kerwin Harrison is the best defensive football player on this team. You talk about helmet to helmet, down dirty, that's what we see right there. Very active defensive lineman going side to side, a leader for this Hokie defense. Late arriving crowd on its feet. Third and goal from the one. Hasselbeck. Straightening things out with six on the play clock. Turns, gives it to Hemmert, and Hemmert's in for the touchdown. Mike Hemmert, the converted tight end, scores, and BC's got a 6 nothing lead. Jeff, that was a drive. I mean, you, you up here as a former center, you had to love this drive. I'll tell you what, I'm wringing my hands right now. The offensive line, the tight ends, the fullbacks, Everybody has a big key in running the football. 
Did a great job for Amari Walker. And you know what? This is exactly what BC needs. They need to get off to a good start. Tom O'Brien and his staff have to be somewhat milked. Which BC team is going to show up from week to week? John Maddox on for the extra point. He's 9 for 9 on the season. And he's still perfect. So BC with a good looking drive taking over just three and a half minutes. Frank hit Mike Hemmert with the touchdown run. It's Boston College leading 7 0 here at Virginia Tech. With a record of 2 and 3, 2 and 1 in the Big East, 1 and 1 on the road, leading here at Virginia Tech 7 0 on an outstanding drive that covered seven plays, 65 yards, 339 off the clock. And how about Virginia Tech? Two holds on the offensive uh, first possession, then a fumbled interception sets up Boston College, and boy, did they take advantage. And that's a, that's all football's about, taking advantage of things that present themselves. You talk to Jeff Jag Jagosinski, the offensive coordinator from D.C., says, we've had opportunities to make plays the last two weeks. We simply have not made them. Here's a case of them taking advantage of that break. Here's the kickoff by Hannafin going to Ike Trouton at the 7. Find some room, 30. One man to beat, Hannafin knocked him out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So a good response by Virginia Tech. And let's go down to the sidelines and an update on Virginia Tech from John Sanders. Thank you very much, Dave. And you need all the depth you can on that defensive line today. However, Chris Cyrus is on the bench, sprained a left knee. He is finished for the afternoon. He will not return. So that takes away some of the depth for the Hokies this afternoon. That is a big blow. Thank you, John. Hokies right now in great field position, uh, position starting at their own 43. Still going with that no huddle. And inside the Parker maybe gets to the 45 yard line. Here's a look at our golf scoring drive. Seven plays, 65 yards, 339 off the clock, and a big fullback, Mike Hemmert, the converted tight end with a one yard run. Great drive by Boston College. It's a shame you can't go touchdown offensive line. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. Believe me, they will when they look over this one. They did a lot of positives there. Pitch it out to Oxendine. Got an angle, 50. Run out of bounds. He's right at first down yardage. Matter of fact, they give him first down yardage at the Boston College 45-yard line. Run out of bounds by Pedro Serino. 10-yard pickup. Same type of offense that really frustrated this defense last week. Georgia Tech quarterback Joe Hamilton, five rushes, 89 yards, a 61-yarder. Option quarterbacks give this give any defense problems. Al Clark is a special quarterback. And you know what? Pretty good guy in the backfield, number 28, Ken Oxendine. Yes, indeed. From the BC 45, 7-0, Boston College, second possession for the Hokies. Oxendine pushing along the right side, gets to about the 43. Number 47, it's uh, Andrew Kraza with the stop for BC. Look at Andrew. Former defensive end, put on 25 pounds. Back and forth between the linebacker during his career. Now he's back on the D line. This will be a second and eight. Oxendine. Right side inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. Quick hitter right there, quasi again. So they like what they see running to their right. Good job by the right guard, one of the leaders on this football team, the Napoli. And you know what? You've got to like the story at the right tackle position. Brad Baylor, six foot four, 298 pound senior. Last spring, he was a defensive tackle. Made the conversion this fall, starting and playing very well. Third and short for Virginia Tech. Under four and a half to play, first quarter. Action down. Boy, that's going to be close. Very active Eric Stores, number 51. He made the tackle. You know, when you talk about the Boston College defense, you talk about number 51, Eric Stores. He's known for, look at this, following down the line, great tackle, nine sacks, leads the nation. Number one in the Big East, number one in the nation in sacks, nine. He's the ever-ready battery. He keeps going and going and going. You bet. He lost the yard on that play. Fourth and a very short two at the 37. A little confusion. Here's Oxendine. 
Bryan, I tell you what, he pushed and pushed, but I don't think he got it. Great job by the defensive front for Boston College. Number 95, Chris Hovan. Talking about people gaining weight, 30 pounds in the offseason. Great job by Boston College. Brooke healed number 59 in Vile 2. And actually, that never really got off on this play. Looked like one of those plays where their timing was off. With short time, you know, for short yardage, get it up there and get it going. The momentum clearly on Boston College's side. The Eagles lead it 7-0 here at Blacksburg. 3.42 to go, first period. Boston College with a 7-0 lead. The Eagles, the number two rushing team of the Big East Conference, going against Virginia Tech's ball club. Their defensive unit is number one against the rush. And so far, 43 yards on the ground for BC. They'll stay right there. Amari Walker. Cut it up. Maybe up to the 40-yard line. Anthony Midget, number nine, brings him down. Tell you what, that's a, a terrific scenario here, Jeff, as you look at the uh, BC, that number two rushing attack against the number one rush defense. And this is the kind of situations offensive linemen and defensive groups like to see, you know? We feel we're pretty good on the offensive line. Virginia Tech feels they're pretty good on the uh, defensive front. Well, let's play for 60 minutes and let's find it out. Second and eight at the 40. Clack running coming up in three minutes to go, first period. Also that play action. That time got some terrific blocks. Got a man down the sideline and he overthrows number 80. That's Mike Guazzo covering on the players Pearson Prelo. Guazzo out of Indian Hills High School, Oakland, New Jersey. 6'4, 219. Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. We're at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field in Blacksburg, Virginia. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. And we have got a good one. First place at stake. Virginia Tech three and zero in the conference. Boston College two and one. So far, BC two uh, one for two in third down conversions. They'll try it from the gun. Third and eight. Hasselbeck lost his guard. He fell down. Throws into traffic and an incompletion. Lauren Johnson covering. He was intended trying to get it to Derek Crittenden, number nine. So to bring on a punt formation, the Tech defense has held. And they get an appreciative salute from the fans here in Blacks Blacksburg, Virginia. Jason Malecki out of Springfield, Virginia. He's going to kick to Angelo Harrison. Malecki averaging just under 39 yards per punt. With time, and oh, he hammers this one. Just milked it. And it's going to die inside the five. Yes, it does. What an effort by Jason Malecki, his eighth punt to die inside the 20-yard line. Marvelous work for the junior from Springfield, Virginia. We talked to Tom O'Brien, the BC head coach, his concerns about stopping the Virginia Tech offense. You can't just key on the tailback because their quarterback is is very elusive and he can get out of the pocket and he can hurt you and they have great wideouts. So, you know, they're very multiple on offense. So, you know, we just have to be solid in our tackling today. And if we're not, it'll be a long day for us. Well, so far, Jeff, they have been pretty solid in their tackling and right now enjoy terrific field position. The Tech started from its own three. Pushing it out close to about the eight yard line. That's Ken Oxendon. Both of these teams are very well coached, and I think they realize what it is that they do best. They're big up front on the offensive line. They've got, you know, both got quality running backs. Oxendine, north and south. Great job by the offensive line. Washington, number 75, with a good push. They're going to stay with what brought them. They're going to run the football. They're going to try and control the clock. And turnovers eventually will be a big key. Second and four. From the eight. Good size of both these offensive lines as Oxendine breaks one. First down for Virginia Tech up to the 19 yard line. Quick hitter off that left side. George White, the strong safety, came up to make the stop. You're talking about those old lines. Uh, Virginia Tech offensive line averaged 302. The defensive front for BC averaging 271. Quite a size advantage. And you know what? You get a big 225 pound running back, north and south. Offensive lineman's dream. 30 pound advantage up front, big running back. Let's have fun, let's play football. Ball up at 19 after 10 yards game, and Hammond straight up the middle again. 
George White had to come up from the strong safety to make the stop on Oxenbein. And I know you know what we're going to run, so let's do it. And that's a great thing about an offensive line is having the confidence. People know you're going to run the football. Can you stop it? Picked up seven on that play. Second down and three. It's going to set up the play action at some point real well. Oxen down. Close to first down yard. It's had to get to just shy of the 29. Markel Blunt, number 90. Makes the stop. Markel, big young man, 6'2", 225, number 90 for Boston College. We, have a, well, we thought we had an injury. Some of the trainers running out onto the field for Virginia Tech. They seem to be straightened out. Third down and one. There's your rushing total right now. What do you figure right here? Just go behind your center. Washington's been doing a good job, number 75. You've got to go behind Washington and number 64, their senior leader, the Napoli. You're talking about a guy that. He looks like an offensive lineman. He talks like an offensive lineman. Good football player. First quarter early, Air Force and Navy. No score in our US, ESPN USA Today top 25. And we got a measurement. And it's about a foot shy of a first down. Good coach Frank Beamer. Out of Hillsville, Virginia. You know, he's an awfully modest man. He was talking about his Hall of Fame induction. And uh, you've got to be impressed with his humility. Very successful football coach, quality individual. Yes, indeed. Oxendine, 13 carries, 58 yards. Does he get the call here? Yes, sir. Right up the middle, got the first down. <laughs> 47 seconds to go here in the first period. Well, you talk about offensive line play, you talk about, you know, the group. But, you know, there's a battle within the battle. Look at Washington and Hovan. Oof. You know, you talk about pad leverage and two big guys going at it. This is what football is all about. That's impressive. First down from the 29 for Virginia Tech. The three wides in the game right now. Stewie, Harrison, and Handy. Nice run there by Parker. Gets across the 35 to the 36. He's tripped up. Pedro Serino got a piece there. Pedro coming up from his free safety spot. What do you think of this no huddle? Well, I was uh, asking Ricky Bustle, the Virginia Tech offensive coordinator, about it yesterday. I know as an offensive lineman, I would much prefer to go back in the huddle, take my time. But you see their, uh, you know, their operation. They stay at the line of scrimmage. You know, what it, it basically does it you know, presents a, a problem for the defense. BC can't substitute, can't change their people on the fly. Indeed, 15 minutes complete here from Blacksburg, Virginia. Boston College with a 7-0 lead over the Hokies of Virginia Tech. For action here at Blacksburg, Virginia. Boston College with a 7-0 lead over the Hokies. Hokies with a second down and five at their own 35, and their offense got to slug it out right now with BC. There's a look at Ken Oxendine. He's the main gun right now. Clark goes out of the shotgun. He's got a lot of time over the middle to his tight end. Gets it up to the 43-yard line. Sean Sullivan with the catch, number 88. Steve Martin, number 55 on the stop for Boston College. Absolutely no pressure on the quarterback. Al Clark, we talk about his mobility. There's no need to be mobile when you can sit in the pocket for that long. That's amazing. Balls at the 44-yard line. This drive started late in the first quarter, back at the three. And Parker just driving, and he's up to the 49-yard line. Good read by Clark, the quarterback, and as good, if not a better run by Parker. First quarter stats, and the rushing edge goes to Virginia Tech. Total yards goes to Virginia Tech. But right now, BC leads it. 7 nothing. And how big are those penalties? The two penalties for 32 yards, Kill two holding calls against the uh, Virginia Tech offensive line. Big key. Win one of those battles. Which team will blink first? That's it. 
Balls at midfield. Clark, he's got a man wide open. 83, Harrison, he's there, he's got it. And stays on his feet, touchdown Virginia Tech. Dave, you mentioned it earlier. The ability to run the football will set up the play action. The secondary drawn in. Clark with all day long. Hangs it up toward the post. Angelo Harrison wins the jump ball, stays on his feet. He beats Tolfrey and he gets his crowd in Blacksburg into this football game. Shane Graham on for the extra point. Outstanding grab by Harrison, his second TD of the season. And the extra point is good. So that quickly, Virginia Tech responds to tie it at 7-7 here in Blacksburg. Dynamic combination of Clark to Harrison ties it. So for the third time this season, Angelo Harrison with a touchdown. It was a beauty. And here's how it happened. Boston College defense trying to come after him, bringing a blitz. Don't get there until late. Al Clark. A great throw, not a good throw. And you talk about the decision process of this young quarterback. His sixth start in his career. Harrison wins the jump ball, touchdown. This is offensive execution. You know what? And you know the offensive linemen are going to eventually be there. <laughs> you know, they're going to eventually get there. They don't like to run that far. <laughs> you take care of your boys. I like that. The offensive linemen say, you come over to the sideline, we'll cheer all you want. <laughs> Kibble kick it off and crushes one out of the end zone. Touchback and Virginia Tech fired up. So let's go to John Sanders for an update, John. David, thank you very much. How do you stay cool in all this gear on a warm afternoon on the Virginia Tech sideline? You do it with this machine right here. No, it's not the front end of a diesel truck, a tractor trailer rig. It is an air conditioning unit. 40 pounds of ice on the side, circulates the water through, blows dry air, not moist air, out on the players. Believe me, it helps them to stay cool along the sidelines. They're the home team. What do they have on the other side of the field? Nothing. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> I think, tell you what, lesson learned. Bring your own from the 20. Austin College takes over. Mike Cloud in the game, and he's going nowhere. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Mike brings a change of pace. He's a little bit more explosive uh, outside runner than Amari Walker. Corey Moore, number 56, with the stop. And, you know, you talk about the touchdown by Harrison. What does that do? It pumps life into the defense. They've been struggling a little bit stopping the run. Great job of pursuing the football. Bud Foster, their defensive coordinator. That was what he was stressing yesterday. We need 11 hats to the football. Wiseo and Harding, bottom of your screen. Hasselbeck, number one passer in the Big East. Mike Cloud. Found some running room and then had it cut off after gain of four. Steve Tate, number 49. Here's a guy that. We're going to search and destroy kind of middle linebackers. He's going to find you if you're carrying it. There's going to be a great matchup in the pits all day long. Number 93, Harrison. And you know what? Doug Brzezinski. We talked about him earlier. Great job of blocking. Look at him staying after him. That's how you break a defensive lineman's spirit. Hitting him all day long. Big play here. Crowd recognizing and on their feet and cheering. Third and five from the 25. Tech Sean Blitz. And to bring everybody. Right tackle move. He saw it. Paul Zikoskis making a start today. And that's a costly Good penalty for Boston College. Well start. Movement on the offense. One year ago, this young man was playing high school football for Boston College High School. You know what? I'm willing to bet he never played in front of 50,000 screaming fans. I think that's a safe bet. He saw the blitz just like everybody and ready to do his part, but a little bit early. And he's the furthest from the quarterback. It's tough for the tackles to hear in a loud, loud stadium. And they are turning up some volume here at Blacksburg. Third down, 10 from the 20 in a 7-7 ball game. Underneath to Hemmert. Hemmert across the 25 to the 26. That'll be short of a first down. Corey Irby, number 26 with the stop. 
Virginia Tech has held one more time. That's the second time they forced the BC, second time in a row, they forced BC a three and out. You have to wonder how big that uh, movement penalty was. I like the offensive selection that Boston College has used thus far, using some shotgun, trying to run the ball. And, and you know, put the onus on the offensive line. This is a strong part of your team. Let's use it. Now, Lucky banged a 57 yarder last time out. Almost had that one blocked. Good hang time. Harrison from his 33. Bang! Down he goes. Shalom Tolfrey. Outstanding coverage on that punt return. So back to the 32 yard line. Virginia Tech will put it in play from there in a 7 7 ball game for Blacksburg. Sam O'Brien's BC Eagles is locked in a 7-7 game here at Blacksburg, Virginia. It's out of town scores, other happenings in the world of college football. An improved Wake Forest Club up early on number five, North Carolina. No score, Michigan and Northwestern. Michigan State, Indiana just underway. Air Force and Navy early on. On the Big 12, Kansas State. New running backs, Lamont Pegues, number seven. Cullen Hawkins, number 42. It's Pegues, right side. It's room, one man to beat. And he's out of bounds. They call him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Pedro Serrano just had enough of an angle to knock him out of bounds. Boy, did that open up. When you talk about Lamont Pegues, you talk about a guy like Mike Cloud. He has that extra gear. Transferred from Clemson University, and he shows you he's got a little bit of speed. Ran out of bounds by number three, Pedro Serino. Big play for the Virginia Tech offense. 28 yard gain by Pegues. That puts Virginia Tech 101 yards rushing on the day. Pegues again cuts back, nice yardage. Down to the 32. George White, number 40, finally stops him. Quick hitter up the middle, and Pegues, boy, he's got great vision, doesn't he? And that's a big key. Running backs, you can teach a lot. You cannot teach the vision. They can see the holes. And you know what? It starts with an offensive line. If the offensive line can get you back to the line of scrimmage without getting hit, a running back has a chance. Yes, he does. This could be a fun down for Virginia Tech. Second and three for 32. Ryan game's been working beautifully. They're over 100 yards. Pegues. He's got to be real close to first down yardage. He stumbled just a little bit as he was getting through the hole. Number 98, Mike Willits. With the stop. Let's look at Mike, 6'4", 275, a sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia, at the West Potomac High School. You've got a lot of guys in this game from Boston College and Virginia Tech from that Northern Virginia area. And you know they're uh, revisiting some acquaintance from their high school days. <laughs> you can bet on that. Third and a real short one. Up back, Hawkins. And he picked up the yardage. So first down for Virginia Tech, where their offense is starting to really click now. That last time they had the ball, nine plays, 97 yards for the touchdown. Clark to Harrison for the score, 50-yard TD pass. You talk about the pace of the game. You look at the Boston College defenders, hands on their hips, 97-yard drive last time. They're driving again against them. Fatigue will be a factor at some point. Clark to Geese this time. Spun right into it. Couple of hits there. Carlton Row, number four, helped finish him off. He had some help. Markel Blunt, number 90, and Andrew Quaza, number 47. Had a little bit of a timing problem in the backfield for the second time. It's that sprint draw kind of action, right? You yeah, know, the quarterbacks and running backs, obviously, when you've got Oxendine and, and Clark, they're used to working together more. Pegues in the lineup. <laughs> He should be able to get to uh, produce much easier. He doesn't take up near as much room as Oxen does. Yeah, it. Hopkins fights his way across the 25 to the 24. Nothing flashy about this team. There's nothing flashy about either one of these football teams. And I think they came in with the idea 
We're going to run the football. We're going to control the clock. And you know what? Vince Lombardi said it a long time ago. If you can run the football against the team, you will break their spirit. And we're going to see which one of these teams' spirit gets broke first. Handy, along with Harrison at the top of your screen, Michael Stewie at the bottom on this third down and seven from the 25. Play clock at six. Clark, they run a blitz. Screen right side to the fullback. He's got room. He's got a great block. He's inside the 15 to the 11. Outstanding block. 57 was Dwight Vick. Harrison make that Hawkins rather with the reception from Quaza. Finally brought him down. Great job of play selection. You know, Boston College wanting to come after the quarterback. Great call. The screen, you see number 57. Dwight Vick with a big block. Continues this drive. Virginia Tech, impressive offensively. The offensive line is clicking their running game. And who could not be impressed with their young quarterback? Yes, indeed. A lot of poise. And Hawkins, fine job for the six foot, 202 pound sophomore from Pittsburgh's up to St. Clair High School. First and 10 at the 11. Oxen down and Parker back in the game. Parker gets the carry. Maybe gets back, gets to the 10 yard line. This drive started back at the 32 yard line of Virginia Tech. And this is when you're, you're in the defensive huddle. You need somebody to stand up and make a play. You know what, when you start looking at number 90, you're talking to one of the leaders, Markel Blunt, making a tackle, stores. You know, toll free. Somebody needs to stand up for this defense and make a play right now. Spread formation for Virginia Tech on the second down and nine. Ball at the ten. Clark, it opened up. The draw. He got a block. Cut inside the five. And boy, how about saw Todd Washington, number 75, get down on a little guy and just obliterated him. Just erased him. That is an offensive lineman's dream to be hooked up with a safety. And you know what? You talk about Clark and his athleticism. You see a little bit right here about his toughness. Quarterback draw, call play. Watch the hit he takes right there. Great job by Serino. And Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator, says, I would hope at some point Hal will learn to get down earlier. <laughs> if he keeps getting hit like this, he'll learn, believe me. Yes, he will. Full house eye formation. Hawkins in motion. Oxendine tripped over one of his linemen, number 74, Derek Smith, the left tackle. That much to the advantage for BC. We talked about somebody standing up and making a play. Andrew Quaza, number 47, for the BC defense, did a great job getting penetration on Derek Smith, forcing this fourth down. And you know, this is a big play for Boston College, limiting Virginia Tech to a field goal attempt. Yes, indeed. Shane Graham, seven of nine on the season. Shane out of Dublin, Virginia. And that was an easy kick for Shane Graham. Hokies take the lead, 10-7, 5.41 to go in this Big East Conference matchup. Virginia Tech in first place, trying to hold on here from Blacksburg, Virginia. We return right after this. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders back with you from Blacksburg. 10-7 Virginia Tech. Good-looking drive after 41-yard punt from B.C. Virginia Tech takes it home to get a 20-yard field goal from Graham to make it 10-7. Kittles kick on Two yards deep. Oh, and he's going to bring it out. He was told to keep it there. And he pays a price. Derek Crittenden. Jermaine Walker told him to keep it there, and then Crittenden run it out, runs it out, and a penalty flag on the play. Officiating staff, Buddy Ward in charge in the white hat. You have to ask yourself, why does it take four or five people to uh, make this call? Dead ball, personal foul, on the return team. Good ball, personal foul on the kicking team. They're offset. So they offset. Take a look at uh, that infraction. Couple of guys getting into it. 
And you know what? There is something to be said about guys that cover kicks, but don't go after the kicker. You know, there's, there's somebody going after your kicker. Regardless to what happens, if you're Virginia Tech, you do not let anybody bother your kicker. Scott Dragos back up tight end. He knows how to pick his fights, right? <laughs> yeah, boy, I tell you what, he had his back to him and he hit the kicker? The rushing story today, Tech with 123 yards, Boston College with 51. And At a good ball, personal foul on the receiving team will penalize half the distance to the goal. At a dead ball on the kicking team will penalize 15 yards and it'll be a first down. So a lot of administration work as we walk it off. Go back half the distance and then we'll add 15. So basically Boston College gains yards from this infraction. Yep. This is a this is a strange call. I don't think I have ever, in all the time I have played or watched football, I don't think I've ever heard this call before. Usually they just cancel each other out, right? Typically. You know what, Frank Beamer, he's looking for somebody on that sideline to tell him, could you explain this to me, please? He says, I've been coaching football a long time. I don't know that I've ever seen this call before. So ball at the 24. Hokie fans upset. 10-7, Virginia Tech. Jamari Walker up to the 29. Steve Tate, number 49 on the stop. There's your time remaining. Scores from out of town. Wake Forest by three. Northwestern by three against Michigan. That at the big house. Michigan State over Indiana. The Naval Academy at home leading the Air Force. They're scoring that Big 12 matchup. Later on today, Penn State, Ohio State. Second and five, 29, Hasselbeck. Deep ball, sideline, got a man, and it's complete to Jermaine Walker. This is a big drive. Big drive for this Boston College offense. They started well early. You mentioned the rushing yardage. Able to protect their quarterback. Hasselbeck missed last week's game. A bad hand and a hip. Great job of Jermaine Walker going down and making the reception. You know, Virginia Tech somewhat stolen the momentum back. It's time for BC to get back into this match. It's like a tennis match, hitting it back and forth across the net. Well, now it's in Boston College's side of the court. And they need a good drive, no doubt about it. Hemmert, who scored the touchdown for BC in motion. Walker made a three-yard run out of something that didn't look like it was going to get anything to start. And you have to be impressed with uh, Omari Walker. I know when you come back from knee injuries as a former player, you're always hesitant. You're, you're really uncertain of, of what your knee is going to feel like, how it's going to respond. And as much as you can practice, you cannot duplicate the speed of a game. What kind of brace does he have in today? He's got a state-of-the-art Linux field. And I wore one of those in 1985. They come a long way, baby. <laughs> and so that gives it to Murray Walker. Fights across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Jamel Smith, number 46. Brings him down for the Hokies. That old Lennox Hill knee brace that I used to wear weighed about two and a half pounds. The one that Omari Walker has on weighs 13 ounces. Wow. 13 ounces. And he said it's big. I told him, I said, you don't know what big is. <laughs> Crowd getting into it on this third down and four from the 45. Fell at third and three. Big play here for Boston College. There's a look at the knee brace on Amari Walker. That's Walker in motion going towards Crittenden. Hasselback rolling that way. Got a man deep. It's Crittenden, and he can't get it. Coverage by Larry Green. So another punt situation for Boston College. This will make the third straight drive that they've had to punt. Previous two was three and out. This time they got off five plays, so let's look at Harrison. Who's deep to get the Malecki punt? Malecki standing in his own 31. Good kick, Harrison, at the 11. 
And a return to his left, but good coverage by Boston College. He got it up to the 20 yard line. Eric Stores, number 51, there to make the stop. 10 7, Virginia Tech final, 254, second quarter from Blacksburg. Big East football continues after this. Virginia Tech trying to remain unbeaten in the Big East Conference play. 10 7 the score, 254 to go here in the first half. And to get the inside the huddle of your favorite Big East team, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big East. Now Clark and the Hokies ready to go from their own 20. Look at that total yards differential. 221 to 83. The big key if you're a BC fan, the difference is 27 on the scoreboard. Here he is. Oxendine. 86 made a nice play. That's Brian Arndt. Came over from the left side and got a piece of Oxendine in the uh, backfield. Oxendine did well to pick up a yard on that play. You have to ask yourself if you're Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer, are you content with going in with a 10-7 lead? Very conservative call. His offensive line has performed well. You know number 51 is going to be around the football. Clark, a lot of protection over the middle. Tight end. Throw a little bit behind him. And that ball bounced up in the air. Boy, that was a little precarious for Virginia Tech. Sean Sullivan, the intended receiver. After watching last week's game against Miami, Ohio, a team that that came in here as a 18 point underdog and really shocked the Hokies. And watching that tape, I asked Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator, what type of pocket passer is Al Clark? Because he really impressed me as a guy that made things happen scrambling. He said he's better than average. Well, he's been composed today. And big play was the 50 yarder to Harrison for the score. He tied the game up at seven. Yeah, a lot of action on this one. Clark, nifty feet. Throws right through the hands of Harrison. Boy, had a little, a lot too much on that one. But there was a lot going on in that play. Three and out for the Hokies, and that works to BC's benefit. 2-11 left on the clock. Tim Rose urging on his defensive unit. Good stand by Pedro Serrano and company. BC has all three of their timeouts remaining, too. Jimmy Kibble. Off a good punt last time out. He's standing at his own seven. Jermaine Walker deep to receive for BC, standing at his own 37. Good snap. Kibble's got time. Left footer nails it. Big time. Here's Walker with the return. Got a lot of open field to this side and gets it into Virginia Tech territory at the 47 yard line. So Jermaine Walker puts BC in good shape. 1.59 to go. Let's go down to John Sanders. David, we want to remind you what's coming up at halftime on our National Car Rental Halftime Report. We have plenty. We'll check in on the other Big East games. We'll close light and we will update this outstanding running attack for Virginia Tech. Of course, Mark Blauchin will also have the National Notebook. That's all coming up at halftime from Blacksburg. David. Thank you, John. 43-yard punt, 17-yard return. Hasselbeck, down he goes. Mix up in the backfield. Danny Wheel, number 90, disrupted everything. A case of one of those plays you're trying to run too quickly. Busted play in the backfield. Hasselback panics. They're in the hurry up offense. No need to panic. You've got a minute and a half, Matt. That's a long time in football. Sure is, especially from this field position. At his own 49, Hasselback opens up, dives, and gets to the 45 of Virginia Tech. Jamel Smith with the tackle for Tech. Clock's still running. You have to be shocked right now if you're a football fan, a BC fan, why they are not stopping the clock. 38. Hasselbeck rolling pocket. Throws and not close. Not close. It was intended for Dennis Harding, Larry Green covering. Boy, you talk about a quick three and out. You know, they got Matt, that ball with what, 211? And Matt Hasselbeck, we saw him a couple of weeks ago, played extremely well against Rutgers. He doesn't look like the same quarterback. Coming off an injury, did not play last week. Bad hip, bad hand. He is not getting his feet set. He's rolling out of the pocket and trying to throw on the run. He is a pocket passer. Get your feet set, throw the football. And we haven't seen that today. Not at all. Hasselbeck, three for eight, 42 yards. Alecki. 
Kentucky to punt. Harrison Fair catch at the nine. So Tech has the ball right back with 58 seconds to go. And we talked to Frank Beamer yesterday about his quarterback Al Clark and here's what the head coach had to say about a signal caller. He's been very dependable. He's made good decisions. He. Uh, he athletic ability they can run run the football and and he's very he's been very much in control i think that's the key thing with him he's been in control Play resumes. BC calling its second time out. What a beautiful setting for college football, though. Right here at the foot of the mountains, and you know the leaves are changing, the crowd's full, they're excited about this hokey football team. This is what football <laughs> is all about. You bet. These uh, make that Virginia Tech has gone to four straight bowl games, shared the Big East title last year. Miami and Syracuse won it outright in '95. Frank Beamer here at home at Lane Stadium, Warsham Field, 41, 18, and 1. Tech, four for eight of third down situations today. Inside, Parker to about the 19. May have to have a measure. Let's see. They get the first down. Just got it. So 35 seconds left. Figure at one point here they're going to try it. They got to try a home run ball. Let me figure. They're going to hand the ball off one more time and they're going to go in at halftime and come back in the second half and we're going to put the gloves back on. All right. Maybe okay, you want to give it one more shot. They just straight up the middle, straight up the middle, and run it out. You're right. Yeah, see, a lot of fans are pulling. You know what? I wanted to see that one more quick strike. It is amazing how many people in the stands think they're football coaches. You know what? <laughs> so, Frank and the Hokies leave the field 10 7 in the lead here against Boston College. And let's go down to John Sanders. He's with Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the first half of play. You have the lead going to the locker room. Uh, you were deep wrapped up there at the end of the half. What are your thoughts overall? Well, it's just a tough football game. Boston College is playing very well. They're a good football team. They're good up front. Uh, got a good football team. And, uh, you know, this is a battle. It's going to be a big battle here in the uh, second half. You expected the battle to be settled by the guys up front, didn't you? No question. I think that's where it is. I thought when we were backed up on our three and uh, brought it out of there and went for the uh, to the end zone, I thought that was a big, big series. But uh, this game's going to be decided here in the second half. All right, Frank, thanks, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Frank Beamer, the head coach of the Hokies, who head to the locker room. We will, too. We get set now for the National Car Rental Half time report. We'll check out some other Big East action. We'll also look ahead to that big matchup coming up later today between the University of Pittsburgh and Notre Dame. That's all straight ahead from Blacksburg, Virginia this afternoon. Welcome back once again. It's 10-7. The Hokies lead the Eagles at halftime here at Lane Stadium. We continue now with our national car rental halftime report. We've talked a lot about Oxendine and Parker, the two outstanding running backs. They're good. And nobody knows that better than the man who watches them every day. That's their head coach, Frank Beamer. He knows what he's got on the field offensively. I don't know there's two better backs in the same backfield in the country. I really uh, feel strongly about uh, those two guys. And what happens? They're both very unselfish. Uh, they'll block for each other. Uh, they both can catch the ball coming out of the backfield. They, they're not concerned who's getting the ball. I 
lot of people figured that it was more of, you know, um, some type of competition between me and him. But more or less, you know, we knew what we wanted to do, and, you know, we're not selfish um, players. Oxidon hits the hole real hard, and then after that, you know, uses a lot of power. I've seen him break many a tackles, and, you know, in just one run or not. A lot of times when I make a mind up to hit a hole, you know, it's, it's pretty explosive. Then I get to the hole um, with the explosion. I would rather, you know, definitely rather be playing a tailback. But uh, when Coach came to me and, you know, for my senior year and asked me, uh, could I make the move to fullback? Because, you know, it was a spot that you know, we just lost, a, you know, a good fullback. So, and I figured, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to win. That's the bottom line with me. And if I can help the team win at fullback, then why not? Losing star quarterback Jim Druckenmiller to graduation and in the first round of the NFL has changed the Hokie offense, but has not slowed it down. Taking over for Druckenmiller is versatile junior Al Clark. In my own opinion, my play, I think, is, you know, pretty much average, and I think that I'm probably doing a solid job out there as far as quarterbacking in your first type, in your first year on a major college football team. And Last year when we had Jim, it was basically, you know, we knew Defenses knew that Jim wasn't going to just tuck the ball down in time and just you know, get on his horse and you know, get going. And with Al, you know, you never know because um, he can make things happen in the pocket. Of course, when discussing the running game, you must talk about the big guys who are creating the holes. Bolstering this year's line is senior guard Gennaro DiNapoli. And I like to just go after people to the whistle blows. I think being aggressive is, is the biggest point in being an offensive lineman. One thing is for certain here in Blacksburg, as the great players move on, the excitement and the winning traditions will continue for years to come. And they are continuing this afternoon, as a matter of fact. You can see that Oxendine has 72 yards, and Parker doing a lot of blocking five carries for 18 yards with another 30 minutes of football remaining here. We're going to continue with our National Car Rental Halftime Report. We'll check some top 25 scores. We'll also take a closer look at one of the big games in the country today, Ohio State and Penn State. That's all straight ahead. Stay here at halftime in Black in Blacksburg, Virginia, Hokies lead it 10 to 7 over the Boston College Eagles. Take a quick look at some highlights here from Blacksburg. Dave Sims and Jeff Bostic with you. And I'll tell you what, it's a difference in the two quarterbacks. The BC quarterback, Matt Hasselbeck, did not make a play, but Al Clark of Virginia Tech did. But this is a good looking drive right here. One of the opening drives, Hemmer gets in for the touchdown, puts BC up 7 0. Very confident football team. Since that time, Virginia Tech's defense has really slowed them down. You talked about Al Clark. That is where the difference in this game lies right now. The performance of each quarterback, Clark hanging it up, 51-yard catch by Angelo Harrison. That got the crowd involved. The crowd has been a big part of this thing. And, you know, obviously adding the field goal late, giving them a 10-7 lead. Virginia Tech, 10-7 lead. And, you know, the big thing, the second half, it's going to be an offensive line battle against the defense. Which team can win that battle, will win this football game? Ought to be interesting. All right, here we are, ready for second half action. Jimmy Kibble to kick it off. BC, Jermaine Walker about a yard deep. Walker, the 15, and tripped up there. And he was brought down by number 16, Corey Bird. Take a look now at our Prestone first half statistics. And it was Virginia Tech winning the rushing battle, total yards battle, first downs. They had the ball five minutes more, but yet lead by a count of just 10 to 7. And one of the telling stats is very well going to be that last one. Time of possession. Virginia Tech had it for five more minutes than Boston College. Warm day here in Blacksburg. Could be a factor late. BC from the gun, first and 10 at the 20. Hasselbeck throws. And nowhere to go for number 80. That's Mike Guazzo. So not much of a game, maybe a yard. And you really have to ask yourself, you know, Matt Hasselbeck missed last week's game against Georgia Tech. Bad hip, bad hand. And this is certainly not the same quarterback we saw three weeks ago. You have to wonder exactly how healthy he is. This will be a second down and a long nine.
Hasselbeck gives to Amari Walker, who got off to a good start on that first first time BC had the ball. Carl Bradley, number 77, makes the tackle. Help from Corey Irby, number 26. Carl Bradley is a defensive lineman. Watch, number 77. Young sophomore. I think he can be a great one here at Virginia Tech. You always talk about it. Trench warfare, offensive line, defensive lines. Big key, the first five minutes of the second half. Setting the tempo. Well, Virginia Tech trying to do that right now. Third down and six. BC needs an answer. Pass with that quick drop, slant, complete, and it's good for a first down to Mike Wazo. Anthony Midget covering. And BC needed that one to keep this drive going. When you're struggling offensively as a quarterback, your offensive quarterback does you a favor by the coordinator by throwing short passes. Controlled passes that are easy to complete. Guazzo gets inside the corner. Great job of catching the football, protecting it, moving the chains. Mike Guazzo out of Oakland, New Jersey. The numbers on Hasselbeck. The Eagles go first and 10. O'Malley Walker. Got hammered pretty hard by Danny Wheel, number 90. Good, honest effort by these two defenses. Nothing fancy. Here it is. Stop it. That's the approach today. Great job by Wheel, but look at number 49. Steve Tate. You know, you're looking at a defense. Three of the 11 starters are walk-ons. Engelberger, Harrison, who is their best defensive player, and Steve Tate, their leading tackler. From the 35. Second and eight, Amari Walker looking, and Tate's got maybe a gain of a yard. Steve Tate searched him out, destroyed him. Coming off a hernia surgery last winter, you'd never know it today. You know what? When you, you look at walk-ons, when you look at the Harristons, when you look at the Engelbergers, when you look at this guy, number 49, Steve Tate, walk-ons are tough blue-collar guys. Bud Foster says, I'll go in the foxhole with any of them. They bring their lunch pail, they go to work, and when the food's gone, let's play football. And Walker does not look like he is 100% on the sideline. Another third down for BC. Harding coming into your picture, man in motion. Out pattern, and an incompletion. Tried to get it to Scott Dragos. Keon Carpenter covering. Punt time for BC. Matt Hasselbeck is not sharp today at all, Jeff. He's not sharp, and you have to ask yourself if that week off, coupled with the injuries, is really making a difference. Not look like the same quarterback we saw several weeks ago. Asa Malecki had a good day. Angelo Harrison deep to receive. He scored the only tech touchdown, a 50-yarder, from Al Clark. Good snap, time, and oh, line drive. Harrison's going to be able to return from his 28. Got a block down the sideline, and the sideline of anything really hurt him. But Michael Stewie had an absolute wipeout block on number 44 for Boston College. That's Frank Chamberlain. Angelo Harrison got annihilated along the sideline. Number 40 for Boston College, George White. What a hit. Eleven thirty-nine to go. Third period. Glad you're with us from Blacksburg. Hokies first possession of the second half coming your way. When, when we return, Hokies by three. The site, Blacksburg, Virginia, Red Lane Stadium, Worsham Field. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders. Biggest football conference game of the week. First possession of the second half for Al Clark and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Parker and Oxendine. The runners. Oxendine, a good looking run into BC territory. Gets it to the 47. Number 90, Markel Blunt there, as well as number 47, Andrew Peraza. Good job by DiNapoli, Baylor, that big right side of the Virginia Tech offense. Ricky Bustle, their offensive coordinator at halftime, I'm sure said, guys, it's not, it's not broke. We're not going to fix it. We're going to come back, and we're going to lay the game on you guys. The offensive line, control the ball, control the clock. Let's win this game. Second down and four. Yeah. Nice and down. Check his balance. 
And let's see, depending on where they mark it, it's going to be real close to first down. As a matter of fact, it looks like he's a little about half the length of the ball short of a first down. What do you think of this no huddle? Has it had a, a real positive effect for Boston? I mean, for uh, Virginia Tech, Jeff? They seem to like it. And that's what really matters. You have to try and tailor an offensive system that fits your personnel. Uh, the offensive lineman, I know as a former offensive lineman, I, I probably wouldn't care for it a lot. You need to get, just catch a blow, just get your, get your thoughts not, together? It's not one of those hurry up, no huddles. It's one of those we're going to sit at the ball. We're going to really prevent a defense from substituting. We can come in and out of packages because we know what we're going to. But if you're the defense, you know, they almost set the tempo for you. A VT rushing attack, 100 yards from their two top guns. Everybody bunched up front. Five for nine on the conversion. Oxendine got it. Shalom Tolfrey mad at himself, number 26. Shalom had him in the backfield, but Oxendine dragged him for a yard. It's good for a first down for Virginia Tech. Balls at the 43 yard line and Virginia Tech real happy just grinding things out and work that clock down. Bottom of your screen is Angelo Harrison. Clark going to throw. Throws it short and gets it to Harrison at the 40. And he's brought down right there. They give him progress inside the 40. Toll free, number 26, as well as Pedro Sereno there. Mountaineers of West Virginia. Border battle with Maryland up by a touchdown. Wake Forest, that's a surprise because Wake, big underdog there, but playing a lot better. Michigan, only by three over Northwestern. Ty score from Bloomington, Indiana. And a Wolverines by a field goal over the Wildcats. Back here at Blacksburg, second and six. And down he goes, Chris Hovan with the sack. Hovan beat his man and got in and sacked Al Clark last week. The offensive line of Virginia Tech gave up six sacks, and here's the first of the day. And they've done a great job today protecting Clark. Hovan is a guy Tim Rose is just foaming at the mouth about. A guy that put on 30 pounds during the offseason, moved into the nose guard position, and has been an impact player. He's had his hands full today with Todd Washington. Great battle in line right there. Washington, Hovan. Look at the guns on Hovan, too. I'm glad I retired. <laughs> I hear you. Steps up, clock, and right into traffic. Down he goes again. Second straight sack, and Hovan will get that one. Number 95, Hovan leading the And we're charge. talking about five-man rush. Good job by Boston College, and out goes the Virginia Tech offense. And this Boston College defense has really played their hearts out. We saw it earlier in the football game. Can the Boston College offense come up with a play? Hovan, two consecutive sacks. Do they feed off the momentum the defense is providing right now? Their offense has been sputtering since that opening drive, really. Kibble's punt gets a terrific bounce. And then Crittenden, check that, Jermaine Walker prevents it from going inside the 10. So Boston College down by three. They're losing the statistical battle, but only trailing by three on the scoreboard. We return in a moment. Welcome back to Blacksburg, everybody. 8.22 to go, third period. Virginia Tech 10-7 over BC. And you look for hassle back here, maybe some drop back stuff. You think they'll keep that uh, rollout package? Uh, here we go with the uh, NTB students of the game. It's brought to you by NTB, National Tire and Battery, where everything you want, nothing you expect. And Hasselbeck, we salute him for his 3.78 GPA, and Anthony Midget is 3.7. Both of these young men very productive in their academic communities. But if he's smart, he will stay in the pocket to throw the football. <laughs> they go for the 14-yard line. Mike Cloud finding some room. Across the 20 to the 21. Mike Cloud brought down by Anthony Midget. Clock coming up on eight minutes to go, and Hairston, the top defender. Good job by the fullback. Lead block, cutting Harrison off his feet. Mike Cloud is a good change right now. 
Guy that's got some breakaway speed. With the crowd. First down and more. Takes a pounding and keeps driving it up to the 30 yard line. Pearson Prelo, number 20, the rover back for Virginia Tech brings him down. First down, Boston College. We talked about the momentum from the two sacks of Hovan. It looks like the Boston College offense is feeding off that momentum. You can see the downfield blocking. You know, the extra effort by Cloud. I think they realize their defense is playing a great game right now. You know, let's do our part. We showed you the Virginia Tech rushing numbers. Here's what BC is doing. Their tandem with Walker and Cloud. 71 yards total. First down play from the 30. And a whistle stops things. On the offense. Well, that's a killer there. When you start to move, you're moving out from your own 14. And then a delay sets you back five. You often hear games are not won, they are lost. Boston College trying to end a two game losing streak. Lost last week 42 14 to Georgia Tech, and the week before that 24 6 to Cincinnati. Cloud, another penalty flag on the play as Cloud gets across the 30. Flags are down. Number 21, Cloud, the ball carrier. Line Judge threw that flag back at the 25. Number 49, DC. That doesn't bode well for DC either. Elite formation. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. So two red marks on your scorecard right there for BC. A delay of game and an illegal formation. And you can see Matt Illegal Hasselbeck. formation. Not enough in on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. First down. Matt Hasselback having a very heated discussion with Derek Crittenden, the wide receiver. And these are mental things. You talk about mental assignments and not being into the game. That's what we've seen with this Boston College offense the last two snaps. First and a long way to go. Cloud, maybe two, maybe three. Swarmed under at the 22. Kerwin Harrison, number 93, is there. Most experienced player on the defensive side of the ball for the Hokies. 6'2", 274, redshirt senior from Martinsville, Virginia. And Coach Beamer said he was probably the most proud of this defensive unit. They lost six starters from a very good unit last year. Pass the back straight drop, slant inside. He's got Jermaine Walker to the 31. He beat Lauren Johnson on that play. You can almost sense that the Boston College offensive boards and coaches really don't have a whole lot of confidence right now in Hasselbeck. Everything they throw are a little short, one and two routes, nothing deep, nothing challenging. The good thing is they're keeping him in the pocket. They have not rolled him out of the pocket in a while. Pick up of eight on that play, third and nine. Ball up to BC, 31. Draw the crowd, nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Didn't get to the line of scrimmage. Hairston's there. Corey Moore was there, number 56. And you're talking about one of those walk-ons, John Engelberger, number 96. Tried to catch the Virginia Tech defense by surprise. Grabs Cloud by the ankles. We get back to the penalty thing, though, Dave. Boston College was really their own worst enemy. Great punt here by Malecki. Takes Harrison all the way back to the 12-yard line. Outstanding punt by Jason Malecki. So right now, BC going to need field position, try to take advantage of that 58-yard punt. Hokies lead at 10-7, just under five to play from Blacksburg. Tech by three over Boston College in our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Right now, defensively for Virginia Tech, taking a look at things. Charlie Wiles, the defensive line coach, Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you from Blacksburg, Virginia. And right now, Virginia Tech's offense pinned back at their own 14 after a 58 yard punt by Jason Malecki.
Lamont Pegues in at tailback. Cullen Hawkins at fullback. Pegues is pretty explosive in the first half and breaks off a nice piece of yardage right there. George White, number 40, with the stop. Virginia Tech catches BC in a stunt. Hovan, Quaza going away from the play. They hit it right where they ran away. Pegues, you know what? The hole created itself. BC stunted themselves out of position. Well, we heard from Tom O'Brien said there were going to be a lot of movement up front by BC since they're considerably smaller. The average line, the weight of the uh, line, 271. Clark on the move, opens up. Ooh, awkward slide there as he's up close to first down yardage. Had to get to the 24 yard line. And it's good for another Virginia Tech first down. Ball is at 26. The Oxendine and Parker, the first stringers, watching their backups, Pegues and Hawkins, in the backfield for the Hokies. The tandem's done well, over 100 yards today. Vermont Pegues, 5'9", 203 junior from Thomas Hill, North Carolina. Up the middle goes Hawkins. Not a lot there. Boy, do you think this is even more conservative than you expected, uh, Jeff? Well, I don't think it's really that conservative. I think what it what it does, if you're an offensive lineman and, and the offense for, for Virginia Tech, you have to ask yourself, we controlled the clock, we've ran the football, but we look up on the scoreboard, we only have a three-point lead. Look at the center, Todd Washington, number 75. The Geese couldn't get to the corner. Great work by Pat Feltz, number 10. Feltz with a fine job. Wouldn't let Pegues turn the corner. Had he turned the corner, been a big problem for BC. Third down, they lose a yard. West Virginia, we saw them last week impressive against Rutgers. Wake leading Carolina. Michigan over Northwestern. Ditto Michigan State. Navy by four. Third and seven at the 27. Tech six for ten on third down. Clark with time makes the connection. Michael Stewart picks up the first down for Tech. Stewie out of St. Peter's High School with, from Somerset, New Jersey. Six foot one senior. It starts with prote the protection. BC comes with six people. Virginia Tech's offensive line picks it up. Stewie man to man catches the ball. Converts the first down. And this offensive line was under some criticism last week. Six sacks to a Miami Ohio team. Performing very well today. From the 40 here, the Hokies. Hawkins, maybe two yards. Not a lot doing there. Brooke Heald, number 59 for Boston College, was there. Other out-of-town action, as we mentioned, Navy by four, third period. K-State, John Sanders' alma mater. Rhode Island losing to BU. Holy Cross 17 zip over Columbia. Ivy League scores coming in, Harvard by one. And Connecticut and Maine. Parker, play action on the second and eight. Parker, down it goes, third sack of the day. And Hovan got a, got a major piece in that play, too. But Chris Hovan starting to do a number on the Virginia Tech offensive line. You know, there's two sides of this time of possession. You know, sure, the BC defense has been out there a long time. The Virginia Tech offensive linemen have, too. Great job of being relentless. Hovan, Storrs, they were initially blocked. And that's the key of a good pass rusher. You have to be relentless. So third and 13. Time for Clark. Took it down. Nowhere to go. That's a big lift for Boston College. Greg Fisher, number 94, makes the play. Like they tried to throw back screen there, Jeff, and uh, nothing, nothing home. 
You know, these are really two offenses right now that are struggling. Their defense is playing well. Great job by BC smelling this out, staying in position, making the play. They had no, no way in the world they were going to get the ball to Marcus Parker. He was covered on the throwback screen. Jimmy Kibble finally his fifth connect up the 20 yard line and he gets a good one. James Walker breaks a tackle and finally down at the eight yard line. Phillip Summers made the first hit and came back to help finish him off. So what do you think? 40 yards on the punt. Make sure to join us next week at noon Eastern time. Temple, a very much improved ball club off today. Coming off a win against Pittsburgh last week, Syracuse just annihilated Rutgers Thursday night. And Syracuse trying to make some noise here in the Big East Conference. BC takes over. First and 10 at their own 30. Hasselbeck, straight drop. He's got a man down there. Hard oh, dropped the ball. Nice play by Anthony Midget. Because he had Harding on the post. Check that. Rob Tardio. Tardio was there, but good play by the right cornerback. If you're a quarterback, this is exactly what you want. One on one, the ball is under throw. That allows Midget to get the arm in there, knock the ball away. Hasselback just does not look like himself. And you really have to ask yourself, is he really 100% healthy? Final 23 seconds, third quarter. Mike Cloud didn't like his first look, tried to cut it back, ran into Corey Moore, number 56. For an explosive offense, BC, total offense leader in the Big East Conference at 414 plus yards per game, struggling today. They're also playing against the best defense in the Big East also. Yes, they are. Three quarters complete from Blacksburg. The Hokies with a 10-7 lead of the BC Eagles. Come on back. Fourth quarter right ahead. Welcome back to Blacksburg, everybody. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you. 10-7 ball game. First place up for grabs in the Big East Conference. Virginia Tech at 3-0. And, oh. and Boston College at 2-1. and one. Big play. Third down, 11 from the 29 for the BC Eagles. As we start the fourth quarter, Hasselbeck with a straight drop, steps into the throw, and overthrows number one, Jermaine Walker. Lauren Johnson and Keon Carpenter covering for Virginia Tech, so another punt situation for BC. Malecki standing at his own 16. That time and didn't get a good one. Bounces and takes a Virginia Tech bounce back up field out of bounds at the 46. So Malecki had plenty of time on that one. Got off just a 25-yard punt. This from a guy earlier in the game had a 57-yard punt. But isn't that football? Yep. What have you done for me lately? A couple of times under pressure, just nuked it. This time he saw he had time. This is an opportunity for you know Virginia Tech to drive this football down and really put this game away. You bet. Great starting position right here from the 46. Starting backfield, uh, Parker and Oxendine back in the game. Oxendine with the call, tries to slide it outside. Hey, it's interesting on that play. He got a terrific block outside on the cornerback by Angelo Harrison. Carlton Rowe got knocked down and then got up and made the play and prevented possible touchdown. This BC defense has really played inspired. After giving up 42 points last week to Georgia Tech, you know, they, they played very well. They need some help from their offense. You know, Virginia Tech moving the ball, but offensively, I'm sure that Ricky Bustle and Coach Beamer are disappointed with their point production. You bet 23 carries, 89 yards for Oxendine. Parker, not a heck of a lot there. Going to be about a yard short. Of a first down. Brian Art, number 86, was there. These are third quarter statistics. And Virginia Tech 
Just running away with everything except the score, which is the most important thing, up by three. 261 total yards, 146 on the ground. And look at the time of possession, 25 minutes and 16 seconds to 19.44. They've held the ball. They've done everything but score, Dave. That's what this drive is all about, putting the ball in the end zone. Third and one. Jimmy take seven of 13. And you can increase those numbers to eight for 14 on third down conversions. First down, Hokies, Brooke Heald with the stop. But BC looked so sharp the first time they had the ball. Seven plays, 65 yards, 339 off the clock. Mike Hemmert scored to make it 7 0. And that's been the best showing of the BC offense to this point. And that has a little bit to do with your opponent. Virginia Tech and that defensive staff, Bud Foster, they're known for aggressive attacking the football, and we've seen it today. Good hard run for about a yard or two for Oxenbein. George White with the stop. You know, the interesting thing with Oxendon, senior running back, you know, one of the leaders in many categories here at Virginia Tech. Today's game was the first time he had ever carried the football, ever carried the football against Boston College. You see the numbers for today, 25 carries, 92 yards, a workhorse. His, his running partner, Marcus Partner. Parker's also had a very good day. Got a timeout on the field. 12.39 to go in the ballgame. It's Virginia Tech. 10-7 over Boston College. Back here in Blacksburg. First place on the line. Virginia Tech 3-0 against 2-1 Boston College. Take a look at our Amico Big East leaders brought to you by Amico. You expect more from a leader. Amos Zeroway. Saw him last week. He is marvelous, leading the Big Eastern Rush. Donovan, Donovan McNabb, 1,351 yards after his performance Thursday against Rutgers. And Quentin Spotwood put up numbers two against Rutgers. Five TDs for Quentin. We'll see the Syracuse Orangemen next week at the Carrier Dome against Temple. Second down and nine at the 42 as we resume action. Put on the blitz. Park gets away, and he's got a lot of open run. Footlands. I think he's going to win it. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 42 yards on the scramble by Al Clark. We talked about it when we started the third quarter. Quarterback play has been the difference in this game. BC comes with the blitz. Al Clark shows the athleticism he has at quarterback. Outruns the BC defense. The only quarterback in 45 years to run over 80 yards and have over an 80 yard pass in the same game. This guy is special. Did that against Rutgers. The point by Jimmy Kittle is good. So now Virginia Tech has the breathing room it's been looking for. 12 29 to go in the ball game. It's Virginia Tech 17 Boston College 7 on the footwork of Al Clark here in Blacksburg. All about the running game for Virginia Tech putting up some big numbers. And they lead it by 10, 17, 7. Al Clark accounted for 42 yards on this run on a broken play. Yeah, it looks like a broken play. It shows you athleticism. Coming with the blitz, this guy's got some wheels. Simply runs away from BC's defenders. He shows you what a mobile quarterback can do. And you have to ask yourself, Al, please tell me who you're talking to. <laughs> I'm sure that somewhere talking into those ears is offensive coordinator Ricky Bustle. Brooke Heald, number 59, never had a chance. The kick by the left footed Kibble. Carries down to Quinton in four yards deep, and Jermaine Walker tells him, hey, keep it right there. Virginia Tech, the rushing numbers are outstanding 48 rushes 200 yards BC has just 88 yards on the ground 
There's your time in the scoring drive. Five plays, 54 yards, 218 off the clock. And last time they met was last year, 45 to 7. Virginia Tech and Virginia Tech put up big numbers on the ground then too, right, Jeff? Thrust it 45 times for 215 yards. Crowd urging on the Tech defense. Up by 10. Coming up in 12 minutes to go. Hassel back over the middle. Oh, what a catch! Dennis Harding with the layout. He beat Lauren Johnson up to the 48-yard line. That was gorgeous. Boston College's offense with a sense of urgency. This ball was a frozen rope. Hassel back in the pocket. You're talking about a fingertip catch. Dennis Harding, great catch. Boy, you can tell your kids about that one. Ball to the 47-yard line. Omari Walker back in into Virginia Tech territory to the 48-yard line, brought down by John Engelberger, number 96. You often wonder why players go in spurts. You know, early in the game, Hasselback looked good. For the last two and a half quarters, he struggled. That last pass that he cut loose, that looked like a pass. That looked like a Hasselback throw. And as you said, once he gets his feet under, a lot more effective than he had been prior or earlier in the game. Walker this time taken down by Jamel Smith. Young man that was born in Columbia, South Carolina. You wonder why does a young man from Columbia, South Carolina come to Virginia Tech? What a great kid to talk to yesterday. I think he's a little bit excited. He told me, he says, Mr. Bostic, which I don't really appreciate that. <laughs> he said, I am a huge Redskin fan. And I said, well, I'm glad. That. I said, what kind of Boston College fans? He says, no, nah, I don't like them. <laughs> See what he can do. Third and five. Tech show the blitz. They don't bring it. They back off. Short pass. Walker, not a first down. Outstanding play. Steve Tables, almost like he knew it was coming. Hokies are jacked up. They give up a 27-yarder to Harding and then stop BC. It was one of those little swing passes that took forever to develop. Walker in the flat. Steve Tate, we've talked about him, the walk-on linebacker, leading tackler for this team. Big play. Malecki at his 40. For the punt. Went off the side of his foot. Had a terrific bounce. Yes, it did. It hit Shalom Tolfrey at the 12, and that's costly to BC. That ball had rolled inside the 10 yard line. So Shalom couldn't get a break that time. 10-15 to go, fourth quarter. Virginia Tech by 10, looking for more. So they try to shut it down here in Blacksburg. Back here at Blacksburg, they've commenced with the wave here at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field. Tech by a 17-7 score. Time now for the first plus financial game summary. And Harrison with a good looking pass reception from Al Clark, 50 yards. That back in the second quarter. BC rushing today, just 93 yards. And how about Virginia Tech, 200 yards and counting. A start from the 13. and dime carries three men to the 14. Check that Marcus Parker. They had him in a single back setup. If you're Tim Rose, the Boston College uh, defensive coordinator, you're at a point in the game, nine minutes and 50 seconds to go. You need to roll the dice. You need to come up and make a play, cause a turnover. You may see your safeties getting involved in the running attack. There's Hovan, has got three sacks to look at Tim Rose, defensive coordinator. Second and eight, Parker Slip did well to pick up a couple. Serino number three along with Hovan there for the BC Eagles. Big down in this football game, third down and six. We've talked about the inline war today. Hovan and Todd Washington. Look at this fight. Using his hands, Hovan can't see, but he blocks the hole. He allows Serino to get up in there. Good hit. From the 17, this third down play to bring the blitz underneath. Parker spinning, driving, first down, Virginia Tech to the 28. Brooke Heald and Carlton Rowe with the stop for the Eagles. 
Great call by Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator. Parker, does he draw a crowd? Look at this. Powerful running north and south. You know what, Parker, Oxendine, these two guys certainly complement one another. Good blind blocking, too. Dwight Vick threw an important block. Ten yards on that carry. Parker with Oxendine. Parker up the middle. Spinning. Boy, he's tough to bring down. Up to the 35-yard line. And they keep running like this. They can kill this last eight and a half. And when I met with his offensive line yesterday, you know, obviously this is a very big game for the offensive line for one reason. Their offensive line coach, J.B. Grimes, recovering from a heart attack. They want to win this football game, take this game ball, and go visit him in the hospital. Great relationship between offensive line coach and players. And, and these guys love J.B. Grimes, believe me. Cullen Hawkins in at fullback now. Hawkson dying the deep back. Second and three, and die, big break. First down and more. Boy, when you hit these Virginia Tech running backs, they spin and drive until you absolutely bring them down. Aaron Stores on the stop. But Virginia Tech going for the kill right now. We talked about it early. Vince Lombardi said if you can run the football on a team, you can break their spirit. The runs in the first half that were three and four yards, now they're seven, eight, nine. Parker and Oxendine starting to take their toll on the BC undersized defense. Injured tech player. Attention all students, don't make sure you get a Oxendine, 105 yards on 13 carries. Michael Stewie, the injured player. West Virginia by a touchdown as we check the out of town scores. Border battle there. Wake Forest now has given up the lead. Carolina has come back. Two good quarterbacks in the Carolina club. Geldor from Davenport, Michigan by 10. Louisiana Tech leading Auburn. Michigan State by four. Texas A&M on the board against Iowa State. The Big 12 action. Air Force is taking the lead on Navy. Kansas State blowing away Missouri 24 to three. That's at halftime. And BU leading Rhodey. Columbia trailing Holy Cross, the Harvard's leading the Cornells, Connecticut over Maine. UMass getting drunk by Villanova. Oxen down, trying to bounce it outside. Picked up about two as he got to the 50. Markel Blunt, number 90. Tackles in there. Hovan involved too. To bring up a second down and eight at the 50. And obviously, Virginia Tech, their offense is in no hurry to run the football. Use that 30-second clock. Grind this time out. And this is an offensive lineman's dream. Have the ball with eight or nine minutes to go. You know what? Take all the time off. Of run that football. So he got for another couple more. So Michael Stewart being attended to. Got to get him back into the game. Tech in no hurry now. Run it, run it, pound it, pound it. Do you think there's a Big East matchup in a couple of uh, weeks that might be pretty big? How about, these, how about October 25th, Virginia Tech, West Virginia? Was that, was that going to be any good? That's going to be good even if both of them were winless. But now that something's really on the line, that will be some kind of battle. Yes, indeed. That is one to circle on your calendar. 25th of October. Clark going to throw. The, the blitz. Look at Clark. On the run. Up close to first down yard. And Eric Stores finally brings him down. 17-7 Virginia Tech. And now Clark. Some magic here. Talked about Tim Rose. You can see Serino, number three, diving in the air, trying to get Clark. Athleticism. Athleticism. This young man can run the football. He can throw the football. Makes good decisions. Big first down. Got it down to the 42-yard line. We're at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field, Blacksburg, Virginia, for the Big East football coverage game of the week. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders with you in the Big East caravan. It's been a good one. Virginia Tech picks up the first down here. Just what they wanted. They started this drive at their own 13 with 10-15 to go on the clock. Frank Beamer's club now with 6-13 on the clock, up by 10. Trying to put it away. 
You know, your football team is a reflection of your coach. And when you look at Frank Beamer, you look at a guy that's hardworking, dedicated, and you know what? Very steady. He's got a nice push there, Markel Blunt, who's been busy all day, number 90 of Pedro Sereno. Two guys always around the ball defensively for BC. But Oxendine gets it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, picked up five. And you can see the offensive linemen talking to the running backs and talking to each other. And you know what they're basically saying? This is fun. This is football. Loaded up Big Daddy. Well, from the shotgun, Stewie is back in the game as we look at Tom Washington in the center. Oh, bad throw. As he had Angelo Harrison on the flanker screen, it was wide open. And he knows it. Al Clark's going, gosh, I had Angelo wide open. What am I doing? He rushed his throw. He knew he had him. Set up a 35. You've got to be, you've got to be very pleased with Clark, though. Got it set on the bench behind uh, Drunken Miller, and, and he learned from a good one. First round pick for the 49ers. Only hearts. This guy is an impact football player. Got a 42-yard run for a score. Clark keeps it. He gets close to the 35. Pick up of two. Eric Stores, number 51 for BC, makes this makes the stop. Fourth down. So fourth down. And they're gonna bring on Jimmy Kibble and the punt team. So the Kibble can put it inside the 20. He's got 13 kicks. But he's placed inside the 20 yard line. He'll go from his 49. Nice and high, but got way too much in. And three yards deep in the end zone. I'm surprised. We don't see more guys go for the corner. Everybody tries to kick it straight down the middle and hope for somebody to down it there. It's unusual. Virginia Tech in charge right now by 10. 17 7. 427 to go in this Biggie's Football Conference game of the week. Back at Blacksburg, everybody. 17-7, Tech over BC. And that brings us to our play of the game brought to you by Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens. We can do that. Al Clark broke it open on this scramble. They beat the BC Blitz, went 42 yards with the score, and it gave Virginia Tech a 10-point cushion here in Blacksburg, Virginia. Total yard story, overwhelming for VT. 367 yards for the Texters. A buck 81 for BC. And Virginia Tech has held the ball 33 minutes, 22 seconds to 22 11 for BC. Hasselbeck and company last time they had a ball, they had a big 27 yard pickup and then they had the punt. Mike Cloud ahead of the pack. 40, 30, and finally run out of bounds at the 22 yard line by Keon Carpenter. BC back in business. Just what Virginia Tech's defense couldn't allow to happen. Cloud, Hasselback hooking up, starts with protection. Isolation one on one. Mike Cloud gets behind the defender. Great catch. You know what? Anytime you get a running back, man to man with a linebacker, lights, running back wins. Lights out. 2020 football by the BC Eagles. They're 20 to the Virginia Tech 20. Cloud is the deep back. Fake it to him. Throw it over, throws Tardio. Second time they tried that play, and the second time Hasselbeck rushed it and gets nothing out of it. The good news is only going to be second down, but. And the clock stops. And the clock is not coming. Hasselbeck just to simply not look comfortable. Obviously, missing the game against Georgia Tech. Wrist, hip problem. Today. It looks like there may be an arm problem. He hasn't thrown the ball like the Matt Hasselback of old. Harding, the wide receiver, top of your screen. Quazo in the slot. Cloud and Hemmert, the backs. Hasselbeck straight back. Overthrow should have been picked off. Should have been picked off, and nobody knows it better than number 20, Pearson Prelo. Because if he catches, 
I don't think anybody, somebody would have to come off the sideline to stop it. And you know, he's, he's throwing the ball to Guazzo. The only problem, Hasselback did not see Dennis Harding in the back of the end zone. Deep, deep corner, had a chance. Luckily, this ball was not picked off. It keeps Boston College's hopes alive. BC needs a conversion desperately here. Just two for 10 of third down conversions to this point. Huge third down play down 10. Swing it to Cloud. Got a block. Oh, he got a block, but it's not good enough for first down. Number 60 out front. It's Andy Mitchum. Took out two players, but the gain is only to the 15 yard line. Pick up a five. Keon Carpenter with the stop. This is where you kick the field goal. You need. Field goal and a uh, touchdown to get back into this game to tie it if you want to go into overtime. This Don is the Maddich. best play in the game, huh? Yes, it is. From the 22, a 30, 32 yarder, John Maddox is long, 27. He's three for six on the season. Hasselback to hold it. Pollock the snapper. And he missed it wide left. Thirty two yard field goal attempt missed by John Maddox. Tom O'Brien can't be happy down 10 323 to go. Good handle by Hasselbeck got the threads up but he hooked it to the left. Oregon John Maddox just missed a 32 yard field goal for BC that could have made this a seven point game. And he's got a lot to think about on that sideline right now as Virginia Tech takes over first and 10 at its own 20. And you notice nobody talks to the kicker when they miss one, right? You bet. He's everybody's best friend when he makes the game winner. That's the life of a field goal kicker. George White tackles Oxendine, and Oxendine pick up maybe a half yard on that cutback play. DC calls timeout. Eagles with two times out remaining. Same for the Hokies. We look at the defensive coordinator, Tim Rose. Check other action around college football today. Early games, West Virginia 14-7. West Virginia 2-1 and one in the Big East Conference. That, of course, out of conference today. North Carolina finally pulling away from Wake. 13-6, Michigan. Auburn by one over Louisiana Tech. Michigan State leading by 11. A&M. Kind of pull away from Iowa State, fourth quarter, Arm and Air Force and Navy. Of course, Army Navy later in the year. K-State, blown away Missouri. BU over Rhode Island. Columbia heading for its third loss. Harvard leading Cornell by four. Connecticut. And let's go, we got to take care Maine and going over. Real easy over UMass. Think there'll be any interest in that Ohio State uh, Penn State game? Oh, right? Just a little bit. Interesting matchup. Yes, it is. I'll take the big boys from Ohio. Take my home state from Penn State. Get it outside here. Oxenbein. Close the hole in a hurry on him. Maybe get two yards. George White, who called his name at least a dozen times, he's going to put up some big defensive numbers. Strong safety really doing his job. BC calls it another timeout. You have to feel good for a guy like Oxendine. Two fumbles last week. We talked about him in the open. He is a north and south runner. He is a punishing running back. 224 pounds. A lot of carries today, a lot of yards. 306 <laughs> remaining. And he is earning his keep today. 31 carries, 119 yards. I'll tell you who else is earning their keep is that offensive line. Mm -hmm. Group has been on the field for probably 35 minutes of this game. Oh, every bit. Every one of them have been there for every snap. Derek Smith, the left tackle. Dwight Vick, the left guard. Todd Washington, the center. Gennaro DiNapoli, the right guard. And Brad Baylor, the right tackle, the starting lineup for Virginia Tech. Hey, we're looking forward to our game coming up seven days from now. We will be inside the Carrier Dome, an exciting matchup next week. And the surprise of the Big East, you got it. The 10th week, 12 noon, Eastern time on these stations. Out Park with the keeper. 
25, reaches to the 27. Good job by Boston College to shut that down. Clark had an angle. Brian Orange and Andrew Plaza, they run him out of bounds. Two fifty six to go in the ball game. Big crowd not quite a sellout but a very good crowd here in Blacksburg. Ten point lead for Virginia Tech right now two fifty six to go fourth quarter. And let's take a look a salute of the Big East football conference. Players of the week. We saw Mark Bolger last week. Offensive player of the week. 11 of 18. A buck 90. Two touchdowns and rushed for one against Rutgers. West Virginia won that one 48 to nothing. Dakara Burgess. Defensive player of the week for the Temple Owls. 12 tackles. Two sacks. Did that in the win against the Pittsburgh Panthers at Vet Stadium in Philadelphia. Quinn Spotwood of Syracuse. Special teams player co player of the week. 80 yard punt return and Nate Terry he was so busy last week six punt returns 168 yards against Rutgers kept West Virginia in great field position all day. Kibble to punt with 256 to go. Penalty flag I think DC was offside and Kibble crushed this one. Look at this. To the five to the one in the end zone. But he really nailed that one and I got to believe this is coming back it's against Boston College that punt covered 72 yards offsides on the defense that's a killer for BC that'll be a first down for Virginia Tech the punt return team was in one of those modes let's get after the kicker let's try and block this punt unfortunately we have to wait for the snap of the football Side, Boston on the defense, be a five yard penalty, first down. This Boston College defense has nothing to hang their heads about. They played very inspired football today. Uh, they have given up probably more yards than they would like to. I'm sure Tim Rose, the coordinator, will go over this in film or tomorrow. But you're talking about hustling and getting to the football. This defensive unit has done it. Offensively, I think Matt Hasselback has been off today. Nothing doing there for Oxendine, but yet he keeps driving. Oxendine continuing to grind it out. Hit that yeah, came out. You ask, a, you know, how do you make a five yard loss a one yard <laughs> game? That's right. You know what? And it's not like he's running through a safety. Hovan is 282 yards. We saw those guns that he was carrying around with him a little bit earlier. You know this is a big, strong guy. Tells you a little bit about the strength of a guy like Ken Oxendine. And the determination. He hasn't even come close to fumble. After a tough day last week against Miami of Ohio. Oxendine takes another hit. Tell you what, he will sleep well tonight. George White hit him up high. And you know what? The guys that have been tackling, they'll sleep well too. <laughs> Boy, get me to some sleep. Picked up two on that. Talking about Hasselbeck, 10 for 20. 153 yards, and he was picked off once. You know, the numbers are misleading. Mm -hmm. uh, he threw some footballs that just, they didn't look like Matt Hasselbeck. They were, they were ugly balls and very unlike, uh, you know, the fifth-year senior. And had some people open in this place, too. Oxendine, 33 carries, 122 yards. Parker grinds it out up the middle to the 40. You've got to like the program that Virginia Tech has built here. You know, the bowls, the wins. And you know what? When you start winning the type of games and going to the bowls, the orange bowls, the sugar bowls that this team has gone to, it's easy for Frank Beamer and this staff to recruit. You know, you're looking at a lot of homegrown kids here in Virginia. They can take their pick now. It's a program that plays a good quality schedule. Yes, they do. They win a lot of football games. And you know what? They carry around a lot of big rings this year. Well, they've gone to four straight bowl games. Sure, would like to make it five. Kibble hits another good one. Walker at the 20. Out of bounds at the 25. 
After today, Virginia Tech will enjoy a week off and then go to West Virginia October 25. They'll finish up their schedule with Alabama Birmingham. Big one against Miami of Florida. That'll be here in Blacksburg at Pittsburgh and at Virginia. And Frank Beamer. Mahokies and their staff final 37 seconds. They have done a terrific job. Hasselbeck. Short trying to get and you're right there was uh, he had Crittenden open. But Matt was well he was he was off and he was short on that one. Thirty two seconds to go. Here at Blacksburg ten point lead for the Virginia Tech Hokies. Hasselbeck thirty seconds to go and that one's short. Harding and you're right the throwing motion. There's so much to be said about when you know, when you throw it's all about your legs your hips. It's all about everything working as one is mechanics. And today Matt Hasselbeck is not look he's having an outer body experience right now. Somebody else is in his body. Yeah. And almost a fitting tribute that the, uh, you know, the Virginia Tech band was wishing Boston College such a, a fond <laughs> farewell. <laughs> Twenty seven seconds to go. Penalty flag on the play as Walker breaks one to the 40. Takes it to the 45. Little too much. Too late. Too little too late here. This one probably is going to come back. This is a one fast moving game. On the defense. And I stand corrected. It's against Virginia Tech. And because the ball. Both teams are running the ball so much. This game, the time on this game just flew by. If you could eliminate the halftime break, this game could have been played in about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> really? I thank our producer, Paul Carlson, director Jimmy Edmonds, as we go deep downfield. And that's an incompletion, too, with 12 seconds to go. Trying to get that one to Mike Guazzo. Tough, tough afternoon for Tom O'Brien and the BC Eagles, who will fall to two and four overall, two and two in the Big East. And he knew what to expect coming in here. Former offensive coordinator at the University of Virginia, played this team 15 consecutive years. He knows this is a very well coached Virginia Tech defense and football team. On the draw, Walker to 40 to the 44, Virginia Tech. Clock stops on the pickup of the first down. They can get this one more playoff. Five, four. Just got it off with one second to go. And that one's dropped by Frank Chamberlain. And that will do it. Frank Beamer and the Virginia Tech Hokies rebound off their upset loss to Miami last week with a 17-7 win over Boston College. And our player of the game is Al Clark, the quarterback for Virginia Tech. Outstanding day, 7 for 12, 125 yards passing. The big 42-yard run broke this game open. And here's the touchdown pass to Angelo Harrison. They got the Hokies back in the game after BC had taken a 7-0 lead. Hokies now 5-1, and 4-0 in the Big East. And let's go down to the winning coach, Frank Beamer, standing by with John Sanders. Frank, uh... Frank, you predicted it at halftime. You said this was going to be a war in the trenches, and I, I guess you won it. Uh, I think your offensive line probably held up a little better than they did in the second half. Yeah, I thought our offensive line did a nice job for the most part. Protection's a concern right now. We've broken down two weeks in a row a little bit on our protection. But uh, I think Al Clark, a uh, great player, made a great play there, and then uh, they had him uh, look like they had him sacked, and he broke a tackle and went to the end zone, and that's kind of the difference. We're lucky to get out of here. I, I credit Boston College. I, I thought they played a really nice game, and Tom O'Brien had them really uh, prepared.
You know, you talked, and so did Tom before the ball game about Clark, what he can do, the differences that he makes because of that extra dimension that he has. Yeah, no question about it. He's a very good athlete, and and we need to get his passing on track. We got to protect him better, and uh, we don't always want him moving around, throwing the ball. We want to protect him better, and we're going to keep working on that. I know the coaches yesterday. I noticed in practice were saying, "Hey, we still control things, despite the disappointment of last week. You do control things. You're still undefeated in conference yeah, play." I, I think this is an awfully big win right here. Right? against this team because they were dangerous to me they they they, uh, they just do things well and uh, but we do we're four and oh and uh, we're the only team in the conference like that so it's up to us right now and I think the tradition takes hold a little bit these guys know what's happened in the past they know about the four straight bowl games and they know what they have to do yeah I, I believe our guys believe they can win now and, and know what it takes to win and they've been in a lot of big ball games but it's still it's a matter of uh, getting it done on Saturday and, and we're a long ways from being as good as we need to be and I know that J.D. is going to get a visit from some of those offensive linemen who did a terrific uh, job today. We asked these guys to go and get us a game ball, and I want those offensive linemen to take it right over to him. I think he's home. He's made a great recovery, and he's a tough guy. So uh, I want those offensive linemen to take it right to him. What are you going to tell your team now, and what do you look to down the road as far as this season is concerned and where you go from here? Well, we've got a big one coming up. We got an off week, and then we got a big one against West Virginia. We got three big conference games, and then no one in this conference is going to be easy. I can tell you, the ones we got left are tough, as this one was today. So uh, we got to get better ourselves. You know, protecting the quarterback, that, that's a concern. Had a couple of long plays against our defense. We got to get better ourselves. If you could make a final comment about your kicking game, I think Kibble is terrific. And I saw him out here kicking about 67 yard field goals yesterday, too. What a leg he's got. We have two really good kip, kip, kickers kibble is excellent and Shane Graham is excellent and I thought we protected for our kibble well today and and that guy can boom it now he's got a leg all right get inside coach. thank you John Frank Bremer the head coach of the victorious Hokies of Virginia Tech and we're going to throw it right back upstairs we've got more interviews coming up so Dave you take it for a while and we'll we'll take it back later all right John great job with Frank Bremer final here from Blacksburg the Virginia Tech Hokies 17 to 7 over Boston College we'll be back with more of our post game show right after this you stick around tech by 10 over BC